Welcome to video number five of robust control of a hard disk drive. My name is Jose Alberto Luzardo and with this video we are going to continue formulating the problem. We continue with the point number three. The robust control setup for a particular HDD servo system. Okay, we have here the final model we are going to use to design the tracking controller for a hard disk drive. All the parameters in this model have a tolerance, that is, they are not perfectly known, and the real value can fluctuate within a range. In this case, the tolerance is expressed as a percentage of a nominal value. For example, let's take the parameter KY, which describes our position sensor. From the paper this work is based on, we have that KY equals 1.2 volts per track, plus minus 5%. In other words, KY equals 1.2 plus minus 60 millivolts. We can rewrite the expression for KY without the plus minus sign as nominal as a nominal KY plus 0.0c times delta, where delta has all the variability of the parameter by defining it as any value between minus 1 and 1. In general, a constant with a tolerance in percentage of its nominal value can be written as the nominal k plus a constant pk times delta, where pk is the percentage times the nominal value and delta is any value between minus 1 and 1. Now, let's assume we have an uncertain gain c in a block diagram. The input is u and the output is y then y is given by the gain times the input, and the uncertain gain is expressed as before. We know that delta can be any value between minus 1 and 1. The idea now is to express this uncertainty as a structure uncertainty using an upper linear fractional transformation. We do so by using the following matrix representation. We have the real input u and the real output y and the input for our structure uncertainty is x and its output is z. The transfer function now is a matrix mz and the uncertainty delta is expressed as an independent block. The relation between output and input is multivariable now. The output is a vector that satisfies mz times the input vector MC is a 2 by 2 matrix given by these values. MZ is perfectly known, depends on the nominal value and on the constant P, PC. Z and X are related by the uncertainty delta. And then we have these three equations and with a little of algebra we can prove that the representation on the left is completely equivalent to the one we have on the right, but the one on the right is the one we need to design the robust controller. Here we have the case when the uncertain parameter appears in the denominator. On the left side we can see again 1 over c. c is the uncertain parameter. On the right side, we see the upper linear fractional transformation for, the, for this case. MC now is different, but it still is a 2x2 by two, a two by two perfectly known matrix that depends on the nominal value and the constant P. We are, we are going to use this linear fractional transformation for the arm inertia, which appears divided in the block diagram. Imagine now that for all the uncertain parameters, there are 29 of them, we apply the linear fractional transformations as illustrated before. Then we should come up with the upper linear transformation that describes our structure uncertainty problem. Let's see. We have the nominal plant G nominal and the inputs for this plant. We scroll up, we can see what are our inputs. They are 
the disturbance TD, the run out, the reference YR, the disturbance D, the control U, and our output is Y. Let's scroll down and then let's complete our LFT block diagram. Then we have here TD, D, the run out, and the control U. The output is Y. X is the input to the, the structure disturbance, and we have 29 disturbances. Therefore, X is a 29 component vector, as the same as Z, and delta is a diagonal matrix composed by all our structure uncertainties, 29 of them. So this way, considering all these 29 uncertainties, we have completed our structure uncertainty problem. Our structure uncertainty model is now complete with our control system. We recognize here the previous LFT block diagram, but now we see more blocks. These blocks are necessary to formulate our edge infinity and structure singular value optimization. Let's see what these blocks are all about. We have the reference YR. The reference is compared to the actual output and produces an error E. This error is the input of the controller KC. The output of KC is a control U, and now we are going to use a weight, WE, to create the sensitivity we want. And then we are going to place another weight for the control to limit, it, to limit the energy levels of the control. That weight will be WU. The output of the error weight will be EW, and the output of the control weight will be UW. Now we are going to consider a model, GM, which produces an ideal output YM for the reference YR. When this output is compared to the actual output, error, an error is, is produced EM, which is going to be filtered by another weight and then produce the output EMY. So far here, we have these outputs, UW, EW, and EMY. And the inputs are TD, D, R0, and YR. In other words, we have reformulated our problem and created another system equivalent to this one to which we are going to apply the optimization for the edge infinity and to do the mu synthesis for this structure singular value optimization. So we are going to see this next. We have here a simplification of the previous block diagram. Notice the block in the middle. In this block we have amalgamated the nominal plant, the weights and the model. The inputs are on the left, all of them, and the outputs, three of them, are on the right. Remember that the outputs are the signals that we want to affect in a positive way with the design of the controller KC. Specifically, we want them to behave as indicated by the weights, the inverse of the weights, that is. Next, we are going to include KC, the controller, inside the middle box in order to simplify even more our block diagram. Notice that u is not an input anymore because now it's a dependent variable. It depends on the error e and the controller kc. The representation here has only two blocks. The main transfer function is q. 
that includes everything, it includes the weights, the nominal plant, the controller, and the model. We have also the, the structure uncertainty delta. And with the inputs on the left, we are going to put all of them together in one vector, and we are going to call that vector V. Something similar we are going to do with the outputs. All the outputs are put together in one vector, and that vector will be Y. The problem is now to find a controller KC that not only stabilizes the system for all perturbations, but also makes the outputs behave as desired with a satisfactory performance regardless of the value of the perturbations. We can do this by applying mu synthesis. To set our structure singular value problem, we need to define a new structure perturbation matrix that we call delta prime. We have Q as before, and now the outputs and inputs of Q are vectors that include the inputs and outputs of the structure delta prime. Delta prime is a diagonal matrix that has the old delta and it has a new delta zero. Delta zero is a fictitious structural perturbation between Y and V. The mu synthesis is a search algorithm that will find a controller KC so the structure singular value of Q is less than one. In previous videos, we explained that this guarantees two important things. One, robustness, and second, performance for all the perturbations, if and only if the mu synthesis is done considering delta prime and not delta. Let's write this at the bottom of the page because this is a very important result of the theory of control or robust control and so we won't forget it. Alternatively, we can make an H infinity synthesis for the nominal plant and verify if the robustness is maintained using the nominal controller. Consider the upper linear fractional transformation again that we have seen before. Now get rid of the structure disturbance delta. In here we see the outputs in function of the inputs and how we partition the matrix Q in four components. The, the nominal plant is given by the transfer matrix between Y and V. That will be the component Q22 of the matrix Q. Our H infinity problem will be then to search for a controller KC that makes the H infinity norm of Q22 less than 1. 1 is just an arbitrary number but the smaller the H infinity norm is, the better, and the more likely the robustness will be satisfied. At this point, we have finished the formulation of our problem. In this formulation, I hope we have understood the problem very well and we are ready now to solve it using MATLAB. We will do that in the next video. Without MATLAB, we will be in trouble trying to solve this problem. We will see the MATLAB robot control features that is greatly the solution of the problem formulated in these slides.